What's up guys, the snowman here and we have just 24 days left until the Women's World Cup begins this summer in France. I'm very excited about it. Uh, today I want to continue my preview series and talk about the four teams in Group E. They are Canada, Cameroon, New Zealand, and the Netherlands. If you haven't seen my other previews yet, uh, check it out. I have A through D already out, as well as my uh, draw reaction back in December. But yeah, let's talk about Group E today and, uh, and get ready for this Women's World Cup. I actually want to start with the team that was listed last there, the Netherlands, because they're my favorite team for this group. And uh, they became these players stars virtually overnight after their success at Euro 2017 when they won that title on home soil two years ago. It hasn't been the smoothest of rides since then. They have lost four times since their continental triumph, including a couple of times already in 2019. They've lost to Spain and Poland, but the Dutch were able to survive a very tough European World Cup qualifying group, finish second overall to Norway, a group they were leading most of the way, but on match day eight, the final match day, they lost in Oslo to the Norwegians, so they had to go through the, the rigorous route of the playoff, and they drew Denmark and Switzerland, were able to beat both of those really solid European teams, four to one, both times on aggregate. Uh, this Netherlands team has a lot of clutch players that show up in the big moments. It was definitely not the easiest qualifying campaign, but they're here. This is their second overall World Cup. And uh, they made the round of 16 in 2015 in Canada. You better believe that the Dutch are ready to make some more magic. The head coach for the Netherlands, 49-year-old Serena Weigman, and she has taken the Dutch to new levels of success in her two and a half years at the helm. Obviously, uh, bringing them to that Euro 2017 crown. She was voted FIFA's best women's coach of the year in 2017. And the former Dutch midfielder also won a national championship back in college at the University of North Carolina. Played alongside the likes of Mia Hamm, Christine Lilly. She has been around a lot of great players in her day. The star player for the Dutch, my favorite women's soccer player that doesn't play for the United States women's national team. It's Lika Martins, who for the Netherlands plays out on the left wing. And she is just a superstar, in my opinion. One of the best dribblers in the world. Fantastic speed and athleticism. A great vision on the flank. And Martin, she's got a sublime first touch. Ball control off the charts. Uh, she can take a game and absolutely flip it on its head. Talking about those European Championships in 2017, she was the player of the tournament. She was also the European player of the year that year and FIFA's best women player in 2017. So a lot of trophies there, lots of attacking prowess in this Dutch lineup, but Martins is absolutely the cream of the crop. So expectations, I love the makeup of this squad. Their front six is mouthwatering. You've got Martins on the left, Shanice Van de Sanden and her blinding speed on the right. Uh, Vivian Miedema, or they've got a couple of strikers who are very clinical that they can play up top. And then the midfield, really good. A lot of interchangeable two-way midfielders in Sharita Spitza, who handles a lot of the set pieces. Uh, Jackie Gronin, Danielle Vandedonk. A lot of good, capable, interchangeable midfielders. And it is total football that, uh, in my opinion, Johan Cruyff could even be proud of. I have very, very high expectations for the Netherlands at the 2019 World Cup. Uh, I think I would be shocked if they didn't make the quarterfinals. I can see them making a run at the semifinals or even the finals. And I have them winning this Group E over Canada, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we go from a very talented Dutch side to an equally skilled Canadian team now. They'll be making their seventh World Cup Finals appearance because they, uh, they dominated their CONCACAF qualifying group beat. Fellow World Cup squad Jamaica 2-0. Then they beat Costa Rica 3-1 and obliterated Costa Rica 12-0. A ticket was officially booked when they beat Panama in the semifinals. That scoreline was 7-0. And uh, they did fall in the final of the CONCACAF Championship. That was a tough one to the USA. Uh, but to Canada's credit, USA did have home field advantage for that. That was in Frisco, Texas. Lost that one to the Stars and Stripes 2-0. Uh, but overall, lots to be optimistic about for Canada. They have an outstanding defensive record in 2019. Uh, they've played six games, just one goal conceded. And Canada has already played this year the likes of England, Sweden, and Norway. They've got three clean sheets against those three European powerhouses. Uh, so they do it from the back. Stephanie LeBay, a top-notch keeper in the net. This is a very professional Canadian side. As for the coach for Canada, it is Kenneth heiner Moller, who, like many of the coaches at this World Cup, was not the previous coach for the team back in the uh, most recent edition of the World Cup Finals back in 2015. 
Uh, the Dane took over in January of 2018, and he's got some pretty big shoes to fill in John Herdman, who led Canada to back-to-back -to -back bronze medals at the Olympics. Uh, Heiner Muller, a former coach of the Denmark women's team from 06 to 2013, and he's been an assistant with Canada since 2015. What a star we have for Canada. The ageless wonder, Christine Sinclair, who has just about as many accolades as any soccer player of all time. Uh, 180 international goals now and counting. That is second most men or women all time. Abby Wambach first with 184, but uh, Sinclair could pass her at this World Cup. Nobody is better at converting chances and scoring goals than Christine Sinclair. Uh, just such a well-rounded player, finishing technique. She's a leader. The defensive work rate is there as well. Uh, very good in the air. She's the second leading goal scorer all time in the NWSL after Sam Kerr. Uh, she's been Canada's Player of the Year 14 times. Also shortlisted for FIFA's Player of the Year seven times. And this is going to be Sinclair's fifth World Cup, an absolute living legend. Keep an eye on her. My expectations for Canada at this World Cup, they're kind of in the second tier of title contenders. Uh, not really with the top dogs in the pack in terms of the USA, France, Germany, but they're right there. Loads of talent, loads of class on this side. Um, they have the talent to make a deep run. Personally, I have them finishing second in this group to the Netherlands. But uh, quarterfinals seems like a reasonable mark. Uh, it's probably going to be Sinclair's last hurrah. So maybe they make the semis, but uh, definitely somewhere in that ballpark. Moving on now to Cameroon, who's coming off a round of 16 appearance at the most previous World Cup in 2015. That was their first ever appearance at the World Cup. And they consolidated that success with a very solid qualifying campaign. They were first in their African group a group that featured Mali, Ghana, and Algeria. Lost a dramatic semi-final to Nigeria, 0-0, and then it was 4-2 on penalty kicks, but they made up for it in the third place match, played Mali again, and was able to knock down the door there, beat them 4-2 to secure their qualification. Haven't actually played a single official match yet in 2019, which is kind of odd. Uh, the last game they played against a non-African side was France back in October 2018, and they got blasted 6-0, so some question marks, but uh, they are going to be present at the big dance, and they're very happy about that. Cameroon's coach at this World Cup will be Alan Jumfa, who is uh, definitely one of the more unknown coaches at this World Cup. He just took over at the end of January this year, uh, Joseph Ndoku actually was the one who led Cameroon through the qualifying process. Jumfa does not have a ton of experience, just 46 years of age, and he was previously the fitness coach under that last head coach, Ndoku. Cameroon's best player, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly, Gabrielle Anguin, the 30-year-old attacking midi slash striker. She can play both positions. Uh, played with Cameroon during the 2012 Olympics, scored the team's only goal of that tournament. And she blossomed into the star of the team at the 2015 World Cup, was voted the best player at the 2016 African Cup of Nations. If Cameroon is going to score any goals in France, I think it's likely going to be through uh, this player, Anguin. Expectations, I'm definitely worried about the defensive shape for Cameroon. When they go up against the likes of the Netherlands and Canada, they're likely going to be able to carve them in the back. Uh, Cameroon probably going to be in a fight for third place with New Zealand in this Group E. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say they don't make it out of the group, but to be honest, this African side just got to be swelling with pride to be at the World Cup Finals. Finally, on to New Zealand, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is a very weak qualifying region. Uh, Oceania does not have a ton of talented teams or great depth to it. That's why this will be New Zealand's fifth ever World Cup Finals, and they just cruise through the OFC Women's Nations Cup in three group stage matches. They scored 27 goals and conceded zero. Uh, they slayed the juggernaut that is New Caledonia. That was 8-0 in the semifinals. Also had a beat down by the same scoreline in the final over Fiji, 8-0. And they were the Queens of Oceania for a record sixth time. Now something New Zealand definitely has going for them, their head coach, Tom Sermani, one of the more well-known coaches in women's soccer. This is going to be his fifth World Cup as a head coach. Only Evan Pellerud has more. Uh, the 64-year-old Scott has led the Australian women's team to World Cup appearances 95, 07, and 2011. You may remember he also coached the United States women's national team from 2013 to 2014. Uh, the last three seasons, he was coaching Alex Morgan and the Orlando Pride here in the States. But uh, now he's focused solely on New Zealand. So much experience and uh, a lot of wisdom. The Kiwi star, this is an easy one to pick. Ali Riley, who's one of the best fullbacks in the world. One of the most experienced players at this World Cup. 
She's played in three World Cups and three Olympic Games. This will be her fourth World Cup, over 120 international caps. Uh, went to Stanford from 06 to 09, was a national runner-up in 09, and is so solid, an excellent one-on-one -on -one defender. But what I like about Riley, also excels at getting up the flanks and joining in the attacks. Very Kelly O'Hara-esque in that regard. Uh, so she can play a little bit of offense, a little bit of defense. Has played a lot of midfield, actually, throughout her club career. So very multifaceted and interchangeable and uh, just a great leader. So for New Zealand, tactically, I think they'll be way better than Cameroon. I give them a decent shot of scraping out a nil-nil draw or maybe a 1-1 draw against Netherlands and Cameroon. But... My prediction, they're probably going to finish third place in this group. I give them a decent shot to be one of those top four third place teams and make it to the knockout round, but I would put the ceiling for them on the round of 16. If you have any questions about any of these teams in Group E, please leave a comment. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. Give me a thumbs up, and I'll be back very soon with my Group F preview. We're so close to the Women's World Cup. I'm very excited about it, and uh, let's keep moving forward, pressing on. Cheers.